walk into my living room. So this is part two of Newton's Laws, and um, hopefully this makes it onto YouTube, and uh, y'all are watching it right now. So today, you're going to be breaking into breakout rooms, hopefully, as long as the tech works. You're gonna be breaking into breakout rooms and working together to fill out your graphic organizer. So before you go any further, make sure you grab that graphic organizer, put your name on it so it becomes your copy, and save it to your drive. All right, so Newton's third law can be demonstrated in everything that we see around us. For instance, even this shuffleboard. I was watching some uh, Golden Knights hockey just a few minutes ago, and this kind of is, is reminiscent of that as well. So Newton's third law says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. As the puck comes sliding and hits another puck, you're going to see them kind of go their separate ways. Some of the energy is transferred from one to the other, but as they collide, they're going to have an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law always works in pairs. Whatever object it's working on is going to have to have another object that has mass that it's going to be working on. Because if it's just a single object, it's going to again go on forever and ever and ever, right? Newton's third law says you're going to need two objects that are going to exert a force on each other. And that force is always in pairs, equal and opposite. So Newton's laws, what have we learned? Let's see. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Always happens on objects. Those objects need to have mass. So Newton came up with this law and he became pretty famous for it. So famous in fact that he was actually named for it. Well, it was named for him. A Newton is how we measure force in the metric system. In the imperial system, an English standard system, you're looking at pounds per square inch. If you've ever ridden a bike or pumped up a tire or a basketball, you'll see a little gauge, it'll say PSI. And PSI stands for pounds per square inch. So to kind of give you a relation, how that kind of looks is for every one pound of pressure, one pound of pressure isn't very much, that's four and a half pound, or excuse me, four and a half newtons of force. So speaking of force, I made you guys the coolest, top of the line, super, super cool, amazing, high techy techy demonstrating demonstration cars. Are you ready? You ready? You ready for this? Super cool. Bam. No? Yeah, yeah. Anyway. We're gonna be using these over the next couple days to demonstrate various laws of Newton's laws. So for instance, today we're looking at for every action an equal and opposite reaction. So what happens when these two things come together? When objects collide, what happens? They hit, right? They don't bounce off each other way out here. They have to actually collide. They have to have that collision, that crash. However, objects that are really, really far away are also working on each other with Newton's third law. For instance, the moon. The moon is pulling away from the earth because it's moving a centripetal force, right? It's trying to pull away, but the earth is pulling it back with gravity. So that equal and opposite reaction is causing the moon to stay in orbit. So Newton's laws, Newton's third law, can be demonstrated with objects when they collide and even objects that are far away. So as you're working through your graphic organizer with the people in your breakout rooms, I want you to keep those ideas in mind. If you need to, you can rewind this video and go through it again, but I bet you can find all the answers for that graphic organizer. But thank you so much for joining me in my living room and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.